Advancements in technology are revolutionizing all the fields that use computers, including computer music. One group that's leading the way is called CARMA, which stands for the Computer Center for Research in Music and Acoustics. And tonight, we'll meet some musicians and composers who are embracing these changes. This is Andrew Schloss, but he's not a pianist, he's a percussionist. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. He's playing an instrument called the radio drum, which in turn controls the piano. Basically, uh, this is still a percussion instrument, although it's a modern percussion instrument. Um, you might call it a virtual percussion instrument in the sense that the drum, this radio drum itself, doesn't make any sound at all. And in almost all cases, I do things that would be considered superhuman for a normal pianist with only 10 fingers. Even a mutated pianist with 15 fingers wouldn't be able to do the things that I'm doing. The radio drum is one of a number of new instruments being developed at Stanford University's Computer Center for Research in Music and Acoustics, or KARMA for short. Three, and then we start. The radio drum was a predecessor to another instrument, the radio baton, also invented by Professor Max Matthews, who many regard as the father of computer music. Do you like the title, Father of Computer Music? Now, I'm very proud of mm -hmm. that, whether it's true or not. <laughs> but uh, in uh, 1957, I did write the first programs that could play music on a, a computer. Uh, now, they couldn't do live performance and for a very simple reason, and that was that uh, in those days, computers, even the biggest computers, were too slow. So that uh, typically it would take 10 minutes for a computer to calculate one minute of music. So the first slash is a pickup. But Pentium processors inside mm -hmm. Matthew's computer now can calculate and play music in real time. receivers in the flat drum-like surface track the positions of the batons, each equipped with their own radio transmitter. This baton is my conductor's baton where I'm beating time, mm -hmm. and it will follow my tempo. If I beat fast, it'll go fast. If I beat slow, it'll go slow. Now, I think you should use more expression on the string. So I haven't figured out how to use both my string. hands yet. Uh, <laughs> Uh, let me stop this. Coordination is a must, but you don't need to know anything about music. Matthew says that frees the performer to concentrate more on the sounds and not on the technique. It's really meant to be an expressive way of playing music uh, where uh, the performer can uh, devote all of her attention to the expression in the music and not worry about getting the notes right. Clearly, just about anybody can pick up the batons and play, but the instrument is mostly used by universities and professional musicians. Joanne Carey is a composer for the radio baton. I think these pieces were somewhat inspired by the possibilities in the synthesizers I'm using and in the radio baton. It's a different set of limits than you would have in a chamber orchestra, but uh, it does uh, allow you to get far out. David Jaffe composes for the radio drum. He says what's important is to keep the human element in computer music. The problem with computers and, and, and technology these days is it's possible to have somebody sitting up on stage typing into a computer and all this music is coming out and you have no idea what's going on or what he's doing or anything. So in the piece we were very... Um, careful to begin with a clear uh, uh, relationship and try kind of bring the audience with us and say, well, here's an, he really is playing this thing. In the early days of computer music, we found out very quickly that uh, we had a problem with, with repetition. Associate Professor Julia Smith is working with a team developing the Synth Builder, a device they say will be the next generation synthesizer. Instead of just recording the output of an instrument, instead of recording the sound it makes, we, in a sense, record the physical properties of the instrument. No two notes are ever exactly alike. They're like snowflakes. Uh, no, there's always some little tiny deviation, microscopic deviations, associated with exactly how you played it, exactly when you played it, 
And if the note was ringing when you replayed it, then you'll get a lot of different effects. But Smith says for him and others at Karma, the goal is to go beyond the latest and fastest technology. It all boils down to providing musicians with more creative freedom. As with all kinds of music, I think really the medium isn't that important. What's really important is, is the idea, the musical idea. And of course, there's interaction with the medium, but you have to come with your own personality. music you've just heard was performed by Karma musicians and during the rest of the program we'll highlight more of their work as we toss to our breaks. If you're interested in learning more click on the TV Tonight page on our website at the site.com. We'll be back right after this. So what's the new chat? 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 